How's it going everyone? This is Jose Trujillo, the world's greatest living artist, coming to you from a corner of my art studio once again to create one of my awesome paintings. I got my trusted Starbucks. Yeah. Yum. All right. Here we go. So today I'm going to do something slightly different. As I'm, uh, I'm only to doing something different here and there. This is a 24 by 36 inches uh, stretch canvas. And, and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to do some steel light for the, you know, little, little chair and whatnot. So check it out. I'm going to do it with this pencil first because I'm awesome like that. <laughs> All right, so what do we do? Let's do something like this. Something like that. Yep. Okay guys, not to get too caught up in it, just enough to know that you're doing something, that you're trying to do something, okay? Bam, there's a chair. A chair. Let me see if I can autofocus it. There we go. Awesome. Sorry about that. Sorry because I wasn't focused yet, but, you know, hey. It's the way things are sometimes. Okay. So I'm going to do a, a base here. And some awesome flowers. And, you guessed it, I'm going to do another base here, on the chair, this one's going to be a round one, with some awesome flowers, and, <laughs> I'm just joking, <laughs> there's not a base, but, yeah, it's a little still life fun, okay, so, bear with me. Let's do a bottle right here. And then let's do another little another little bottle right here. Just as we can, okay guys? As long as we can, we're able to do whatever we want. Let's bring some light that way. And there we go. Let's get to it. Bam. <laughs> All right. So. Man, I'm tired today. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna uh, make you guys believe that there's no days that I'm, that I'm not tired. There's days I am. But you know, it's part of it. So, what do you do? You just, uh, you just keep doing it. You power through. But you know, regardless of how tired I am, there's always something that I'm never tired about. And regardless of my body could be tired, right? There's always something I'm, ne I'm never tired about. And that is uh, 
but it's a momentum of, of creating artwork that doesn't tire me out. Although I some uh, someone had told me that you know what was the hardest part of of painting, right? Was it was it uh, was it subject uh, matter? Was it was it uh, how much uh, time I spent on a painting? I believe that the hardest part of painting is um, keeping your eye on the ball, not allowing yourself to 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 overthink anything. You know how to keep your eye on the ball. Um, the rest is the rest is easy. The rest is peanuts. See, pa painting is not the hardest thing. As many people many people seem to think that you're gonna get that naturally. Whatever, whatever your vision is, you're going to get it naturally. That's not, the, that's not the hardest part. The hardest part is, uh, is uh, staying true. And what I mean by that is when you're painting, you're not, um, you're not doing something else. You're not overthinking something. You're not um, trying to dissect the painting. See, I keep a movement. See, keep a movement. I know it sounds it sounds uh, it might sound stupid. You know, you must you might, you guys might some of you guys might think it's funny or or whatever, but uh, it's all right with me. But but uh, I learned this I learned this early on, and. Uh, to master it has taken me has taken me some time because the, the mind doesn't let you do it. The mind doesn't let you do it. That's that's why that's why it takes time because the mind the mind wants to uh, take control. And I don't mean that in a spooky way. I know you guys you guys that follow me know that uh, that I chant this all the time. But the the mind wants to remain. Um, dominant in the game, you know, and I truly believe that it's a it's a mental painting. I, I think I've heard it from other people also about sport. It's a mental game. It's not like when you're doing when you're truly doing it. Uh, see, a lot of people think that painting is something that that you do. Uh, you master really well how to think and to me that's not painting to me that's illustration you master something really well you, you learn how to illustrate something very well and and that's that's fine right there's nothing I'm not trying to bash on, on people that illustrate uh, I, I'm illustrating right now but some people focus only on that aspect and it's multi-dimensional when you paint it's not only it's not only illustration. It's also uh, putting in something else that you can't. Something that is unmeasurable comes comes out too. And and that's the what some uh, spiritual teachers like to call the the unborn. You know, the or some people call it the the sacred moment, or other people call it the sacred, the, the you're doing it uh, depending on your religion or your spiritual, your spirituality. Some people call it you're you're doing it with God, through God, from God, however you want to call it. It's all the same. And. Uh, I was reading from who? Oh, it was a uh, man. No, it was Cezanne. I hadn't read that quote. I just read it. I posted it on my Instagram <laughs> a couple of uh, hours ago, a few hours ago today. That uh, 
Cezanne was saying, uh, said something, something like, uh, if if you don't, what did he say? Oh yeah, he he said his quote was, if I think, uh, something like, if I think everything is, uh, uh, everything gets kind of like destroyed, right? Like everything comes comes down. Uh, I don't remember exact quote. You guys can check it out. It's well, well. It's the, I don't really care about the quote, I got the meaning. The meaning is that if you start thinking, um, you're, not, you're no longer experiencing painting. Because he's a painter, he's speaking from that dimension, right? But if, if you're not, if you're thinking, you're no longer painting. You're, you're, you're trapped. You're trapped. You're no longer painting. And that's that's the way that is. See, if if I even start thinking about what colors to mix, uh, it's, it, it, it happens so fast, that's why you have to keep moving. Because you don't, you I, I would like to say you don't even have control over it. That's why it's so hard to master because you don't. And I'm not. I'm not saying by any means that oh my god, I'm, you know, I'm the master of that. No, I just I practice it on a daily basis, and and it comes easier to me every time. Every every time I practice it more, it's becoming easier. It's becoming more kind of like a second second nature. That's why that's why I love to paint like this, this freely. You know, some people call it uh, bold brushwork. Other people call it different things. I just call it painting in silence. And I know I talk a lot for being someone who's painting in silence, but that is not the silence I'm talking about. I'm not talking about an external silence. You're basically suspending the analytical mind, which is very hard for most of us to do because because we want to measure everything because that is how we quantify things. You know. That's, that is how we realize is the progress, right? We measure, uh, we measure everything. We even have sayings, you know, you can't control what you can't measure because we're trying to control it. That's 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 why there's nothing wrong with that in the in the um, practical aspect of life. There's no, no, nothing wrong with that. You want to you want to you want to measure stuff. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. That's part of the, the practical part of living. But in the artistic, you get yourself in trouble if you start measuring. In the spiritual, because uh, true art, I believe, I've, I've always, I've always uh, uh, believed this in a, not in a, not in a, a, a idea, but in a way that you. You believe something based on, on, a, on, a, on a thought, but on an understanding, on a deeper understanding when you know something that only maturity uh, of any kind can give you, right? I've always known that, that um, the painting is spiritual. If painting is not spiritual, you're doing something wrong. And I know that some people don't like to hear that, I apologize. All you have to do is trace back to to all the great artists. They they all pointed at it one way or another. They all talked about it. You know, Van Gogh said, um, "If I if you hear a voice in your mind, right? I've said this a few times. Uh, that tells you you're not an artist, right? A doubtful voice." By all means, continue to paint. Uh, Monet said that all he had to do was was paint, paint as a bird, because he wanted to paint as natural as a bird, right? As a bird sings, I mean effortless, like you were born to do it. It's natural. It's not something you think about. It's not something that you learn. You actually, you know, like Picasso said, also. You, you unlearn to become a real artist. 
he's talking about you, you drop all mental expectations. Mental expectations won't allow you to, to truly paint. And, and um, the real players don't talk about it. Uh, maybe some, some of them probably don't have words for it. They all, they all know it, they just probably don't have words for it. Um, who else? Cezanne, I just, I, just, I just said about that, talked about that right now. Cezanne mentioned something very similar. Picasso also said, if I could just remove my, my, my brains, right, my mind, I could paint there. What did uh, Manet say also? Um, Edward Manet, Impressionist. Said, um, if you, uh, only one thing is true, you paint as quick, right? Something like that. You paint what you see as quick. I, you know, and I don't, I don't think that he meant, I don't think any of them meant that exact thing. They, that's just how they, that's just how they figure that out. I don't think that you have to paint like me to truly paint. That's not what I'm saying. You figure something out. You know, for me, is this. I heard this from a writer, uh, a copywriter. Um, it was the first time that I heard it in a, in a true, very enlightening way from someone who, who I didn't expect um, to be about that because he's all, he was all business. The late uh, Gary Halbert. I loved uh, studying his, his work, his letters. Those of you who like marketing and copywriting probably understand that or have heard of him and he said he never had writer's block in one of his uh, speeches and to me that resonated because most artists are like oh I've artist block you know <laughs> we all say stuff like that right I have artist block or have said it at some point in our lives or continue to say it whatever and he said I never experienced I never experienced writer's block. And that blew my mind when I heard that. And I was like, I, 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 gotta, I gotta hear what this cat has to say about that because that's just, that sounds like something I'd be interested in because myself and other artists are always complaining about artist block, right? And then he followed, I think the statement was, you're an amateur, just like uh, Chuck Close, the, the, the famous portrait painter said, you know? I, I, I never I never wait for inspiration. I just you know the, the uh, amateurs wait for inspiration. True, the rest of us just show up to work. You know he was saying that, that they don't they don't have artist luck. Anyways, what uh, give you some nice golden nuggets for those for those of you who are who are uh, into uh, more more serious into your career. If this is a career for you. Um, Gary Halbert said, I don't have artist block. And I was like, oh, really? Like, how? He said, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't have writer's block. I don't allow it. And you guys are probably like, well, say it, right? Well, maybe I won't. No, I'm just talking. <laughs> I realized I was doing what he what he what he said, but I never uh, uh, really thought about it, that I was doing that. And what he says is that the way he doesn't have writer's block, he says, "I'll fix your writer's block right now." And I'm gonna tell you guys right now, I'm gonna fix your artist block right now. When you have artist block, believe believe it or not. It's because you're not painting enough. Most of us think that it's because we don't have enough, um, um, what do you call it? Inspiration or whatever. That's, that's the first thing we say. But that's not it. It's, it's just another form of procrastination. And the way he explained it was so true to me because I never heard anyone say it so true like that because I, I was already doing that you know it's 
So he doesn't have an artist block, a writer's block, because he keeps moving. Okay, there it is. There it is. There is that's the secret. It's it's not it doesn't happen just because you know it. It's a practice. But you're going to you're gonna practice it. And then you're gonna get better and better. There's a secret. There's a secret that Manet, Picasso, and everybody was pointing at. Sasan. See, when you stop moving, you start thinking. And when you start thinking, you start thinking of, of what you don't have, not what you have. You start thinking. Thinking automatically goes into lack because thinking is a protective me mechanism for the most part. So thinking automatically goes into lack. It's something you don't, you can't even um, um, control. It's natural. Because the analytical mind wants to measure so that it can control. But the analytical mind is horrible at measuring, at truly measuring, and it's even most more horrible at truly controlling. It's 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 good for some stuff, you know, for some stuff. The problem is that it wants to do it with everything. It's so used to doing it with some stuff that it wants to do it with everything. That's where the problem lies. That's really where the problem is. It wants, it, it wants to do it with everything. And, and because it wants to do it with everything, even the things that, are, that don't pertain to the mind, like love, compassion, art, it wants to measure it too. And it spends your energy doing that. That's why I'm not a fan of, of, of painting like that. I am not a fan of doing that. I'm not a fan of, of measuring color and all that. Some people are, that's fine, that's great. I'm not. I understand that principle. And, and, and it doesn't mean that you can't paint if you, if you paint differently. That, that's not what I'm saying. But it's not what I'm saying at all because as you know, Chuck Close doesn't paint like this. And he understands that, you know? Um, But if you figure out how to continue to move, regardless of how you feel, you're going to um, tap into something else if you figure out that. That's really what I'm trying to tell you. If you figure out how to, whatever, whatever you can do, you know, how to continue to move. I paint uh, um, when I heard when I heard uh, Gary Halbert talk about it. It made so much sense to me because I I paint like that. I paint like how like the example he gave. He actually said, "Look," he said, "I don't have writer's block because I don't stop writing. I'll even start writing even if I don't have." Um, the right answer or whatever, especially if I don't have the right answer, especially if I don't have the right color. I will not, I refuse to slow my brush down. I've done it already. I have done it already and it's created problems for me. It's created lots of problems. So if you're having a problem with that, you haven't, you haven't practiced enough. Um, how to keep moving. See, the whole problem is the mind. It's not, it, it, it's not, you know, like I mentioned, it's not that the mind is, is like this horrible thing. No, it's a, it's a faithful servant. But sometimes it wants to take the lead. And it wants to take the lead in things that pertain, that don't pertain to it. You know, art, that's why I always say simplicity. I want simplicity to be my religion and I want art. To be, to not have mind, no mind, no mind in art. And I know it's on Zen, Dr. Seuss, whatever. Um, it is.
For me, it is a spiritual practice to paint because I know what is happening uh, at a deeper level. I know. Uh, my analytical mind is like, oh, you did that wrong. You should have done this. You should have done that. But my intuitive, the intuitive aspect, right, of me knows that I am 100% true to what I have to do. It's just that obeying it, obeying your, 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 your gut, it's, uh, it takes uh, cojones, it's not easy. Obeying your gut is uh, it's trusting. So that's why people call this bold brushwork. They're like, oh, you're bold brushwork. Um, it is. And the reason why I do it is not because I know so much. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know more than most people are watching this. I, maybe I paint more than some, maybe some, maybe not. I don't know. I don't know more though. I will tell you that. I practice to trust it more. That's all. Because that's what painting is. See, painting is really, I feel like it's, a, it's, it's really just a spiritual practice. And I'm not talking about some church or some, you know, I'm not talking about any of that. It doesn't matter what church you go to, to, to that's your deal. It doesn't, I don't... I was raised Catholic, but I, I don't go to any of it. I don't, I'm not against it. I'm, I'm all for it. I'm all for any, any spiritual practice that brings peace to your heart. But, um, but I do believe that painting is a spiritual practice. Painting is the practice of observation. And why observation? I'm kind of telling you guys my, my I, I told you guys this was, this was this were videos were to record my journey, and I just kind of felt to talk a little bit about this, but but um, it's your observation is because you are not. You are not thinking when you're observing. You can't. You cannot think when you're observing. And I'm not talking about seizing thought as a as or or some some trance or some 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 BS. <laughs> I mean, I don't I don't care what you do. That's not that's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about some. Some uh, utopian thing, or no? It's just a natural way of being, but it's it's difficult for most of us because we're so used to thinking. And in painting, if you think, in my opinion, you lose. As as the sun sets, all fails. As I think, you know, if I think, it all it all fails. There's something about observing something. It's, it's really attention. That's really what I'm trying to get to. When you paint, all you're doing is paying attention. And you're just painting. When you are measuring, trying to figure, figure out, um, making faces. If you're making faces and you're painting, and you're going, mm -hmm. if you're making faces, and I know I'm not trying to make it difficult for anybody. I'm just trying to tell you what to look for as, as you explore the art of painting. If you're making faces, you're in your head. You cannot be making faces. 
Unless, unless their faces are joy. <laughs> if you're making faces, that means you're having a conversation in your mind. You said too much red, too much blue, not enough green, you know? So now you have a conversation in your mind. So now you have a dialogue where somebody is... Uh, right and somebody is wrong or something is right or something is wrong and from there there's no way in hell that you're painting you may be illustrating and some people illustrate beautifully doesn't mean doesn't mean you're painting. Now sometimes you you can be a painter and you could still illustrate because you didn't get in the zone because you didn't practice enough to get into the zone. See, I don't I don't I I, I do like what paintings look like and all of that. I I do enjoy. I really do. It's not like I'm gonna lie to you guys and be like oh, I'm just looking for the piece in it. No, I I enjoy the the process, learning. I'm always learning. I'm always looking at different stuff. It's it's always. Just a second. I'm recording, Nico. You are? Yeah. It's always a. You're going to pause the video. In a, in a little second. I'm always in the in the quest of of new stuff. You know, learning new stuff. I like it. It drives me. If if I knew if I learn a new technique or if I learn, you know. I always like it, but more than that, more than that play, much more than that play, what I enjoy it's um just painting. That's it. See, even though I'm tired, I still, I still really enjoy um, the movements that that the art brings about. The art, I feel like the art brings about certain movements that. They go, they go beyond the reality of what, of what is there. It's, see, when you're painting, you're, I believe that you're tapping into another, another uh, to not put it spooky, you know. <laughs> you're tapping into another dimension. When you're truly painting, you start tapping into another dimension. You start, you start um, operating from your, what, is, what some people call it, your higher self. And you start operating from... From the better you. <laughs> That's really what starts happening. <laughs> you're 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 at your natural state. You're pure. You're it's it's like someone that's uh, you know if you like rock climbing or whatever stuff like that. You're operating from that place too. Because you know I once heard a spiritual teacher say that if you're if you're um, climbing a high mountain, you can't really think. Most people are like, oh no, you have to think because if you don't think, you'll fall. No, if you start thinking, you'll fall. Most most people that uh, are uh, like this type of sports, uh, uh, adrenaline or whatever, I, I believe that they do it because they come pure in that moment and they, they like the feeling of a purity, of a pure heart. That's why I like that movie, um, Hitting Dragon, Cr Cr what? Crunching Tiger, Hitting Dragon. <laughs> I don't know if you guys seen that movie, but in one of the one of the scenes, um, the lover of the of the of the young princess said uh, something that really resonated with me. I, I loved it. He said, "You know, it's it's been said that a pure heart 
can jump from a, um, something from like the tallest temple or something, and nothing will happen to to him or her. They would survive. Um, so my thought, what a what a beautiful explanation of of um, of life, because that's really what life is. A, a, a pure heart, you know, that's really life. That's why uh, children are fearless like that until we teach them fear, but that's why a child is an artist, doesn't care. They're, they haven't developed a taste of what's good or bad, they haven't developed the ego, you know, so the, the child can be a, the child can be a true artist. I'll leave you guys with that. My name is Jose Trujillo. I'm a fine art artist. Thank you so much for watching. Oh, let me uh, let me show you guys the final uh, part. Let me show you guys the final part of the painting. Some of you guys like to see that. Uh, there we go. Let me try to move the, the light a little bit. Hopefully. It's not too, well, there it is. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed it. The name is Jose, oh, the name is Jose Trujillo. I am the world's greatest living artist. You guys just saw me paint something so awesome in like, what, what was it, like 32, 34 minutes? That's, that's gotta be awesome, you guys. Let me sign my name right here. Let me get some blue. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Till next time. Bye-bye.